طيب So we are going to welcome to E21. So today's uh, uh, today's lecture will be our tenth lecture, and in this lecture, we, as always, we're going to start with a few announcements. Then uh, we will uh, revisit or uh, review what we've covered so far and how it's related to what we're going to cover today, and then we'll start with uh, what we what we're supposed to cover today. So, uh, quiz two. Uh, the first announcement is quiz two is, or oh, the first and the only announcement is quiz two is Wednesday, and it's going to be during the class time. It's some, something similar to quiz one. Uh, the material is different, however, so it's, can, it's going to be 3.1 to 4.4, and uh, the instructions will be exactly the same. So I will, I will resend them uh, the night before the uh, before the quiz. But you can actually revisit. Uh, you can go back to the the email sent to your uh, area. Uh, quiz one uh, grades were posted, and uh, the average is sixty seven percent, which is a reasonable average. Uh, anyhow, if, if you did well, this is good. Please uh, continue doing that. If you did not do well, uh, this is your first quiz, so uh, don't. Um, uh, I mean, don't underestimate. Uh, or uh, you have you have five, four more quizzes to 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 recover. You have a midterm and you have a final exam. Uh, okay. Uh, so, if you recall in the previous lectures, we started with the uh, the ways and methods to simplify circuit analysis. We said that well, we use KPL, KCL, and Ohm's law, and we saw that. Everything works with KVL case so, but the problem is if we if we increase the circuit, if we increase the size of the circuit, uh, like the uh, the direct application of KVL case and Ohm's law will be uh, rather complicated. So it turns out if we have a circuit, then uh, basically what we're trying to find is to find the essential branch, uh, so the essential uh, branch currents PE. Uh, or the current in the essential branch. So if you recall that uh, in the previous uh, two lectures, we defined uh, essential nodes, essential branches, and we said that essential node is a node that connects three or more circuit elements, and essential branches uh, are those are branches that connect uh, two essential nodes without passing through them, through them, through an essential node. So it turns out that if we uh, want to directly solve for the circuits, for the essential branch currents, then we need to solve a uh, BE number of equations. BE here stands for the number of essential branches. However, if we uh, introduce an intermediate variable here, which we call the node voltage method or the node voltage, then uh, this number is reduced to uh, NE, which will in this case, in E is uh, number of essential nodes and uh, minus one. And recall that the number of essential nodes must be less than the number of essential branches. If we apply the mesh current method, which is the topic of, of today's lecture, then we will need uh, again BE minus N E minus one. So let's consider the this is the circuit that we started the chapter with. Uh, we want to solve for the essential branches current, so we have uh, we want to find the current here, the current there, the current here, the current here, the current here, the current here, and the current there. Again, here uh, we're lucky that we have a current source, so this current is is known to us. But anyhow, let's assume that this current is not known. So we have one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven essential branches. This requires and uh, and four essential nodes. This requires if we want to solve it directly, then we need to solve seven equations uh, with seven unknowns. So we have to invert seven by seven matrix. This is not uh, something that we want to deal with. So if you recall in the previous lecture. Uh, we introduced the uh, concept of the node voltage method, 
And in the node faulted method, we said, well, instead of solving for the directly for the essential brushes current, let's solve for something in the middle here. And then from there, we can uh, we can actually apply Ohm's law to find the essential brushes current. So what we did was actually we started with identifying essential no, uh, essential uh, nodes. So we said here we have one, two, three, four. We have I have four essential nodes. So I'm going to choose one of them and set it as a reference. And the voltage here will be zero. Uh, we assume the voltage will be zero in the reference node. And then I'm going to find the node voltage, the voltage at the other three nodes here with reference uh, reference to the reference node. So that's what we did in the previous lecture. So we saw we saw that instead of solving uh, seven equations, seven unknowns, I will end up solving three equations with three unknowns. Then I will, can apply directly on so to find the essential branch curve. In this lecture, we're going to uh, use another technique. And in this technique, I'm going to, instead of solving for the, uh, uh, instead of solving for the node voltage, I'm going to solve for the mesh current. So here I have, So here I have uh, how many meshes? I have one, two, three, four. I have four meshes. So I want to solve for the current that's circulating in each mesh. And this uh, solution or this technique is going to give me BE minus NE minus one, which means it's going to give me four equations for, for unknowns. Does that mean that this technique is not, uh, the node voltage method is superior to this technique? The answer is no. It turns out for this circuit, the one that we have, the node voltage method, uh, and uh, actually the node voltage method in this circuit, uh, the uh, mesh current method, the, can exactly give me the same number of equations because I have the current source here. But and so you'll see in some circuits that uh, solving with the node voltage method will give you an easiest way of solving for a problem, and solving for the mesh current method is going to give you a, uh, another problem. Solving for the mesh current method is going to give you an easier way of solving for a problem. Okay. So now let's define uh, the mesh current. Uh, so before what we're going to study, we're going to study mesh current method. And in the mesh current method, and before before uh, talking about the method itself, let's define the mesh current. What do we mean by the mesh current? So at this stage, we don't we know the difference between a mesh and a loop, right? So what do we mean by mesh current? So a mesh current is a current that exists only in the perimeter of a mesh. So we're introducing some sort of fictitious current. Not an actual current, not 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 a current that you're going to measure. If you take a ball and you're trying to measure, if you take a multimeter or an, a meter and you're trying to measure the current, you will not see exactly the mesh current that we we are trying to calculate. Except if you are measuring the current in the perimeter, which is in this this part and in this part. So this tells us that. And again, in this part, this tells us that well, a mesh current uh, is not necessarily a branch current, but uh, a mesh current is not necessarily a branch uh, branch current, uh, but it could be a branch current if it's in the perimeter of the uh, of the mesh. For example, I four is actually a branch current is a mesh and branch current at the same time taking for example i2 is not a mesh current it's only a uh, i2 is only a 
I2 is only a mesh current. So what do we mean by here, by this, if you take a multimeter here and you place it somewhere in here, of course you need to remove this connection. Um, what you're going to measure here is simply I4. If you take it over here and try to measure the current here, what you're going to see is not I2, something different from I2. It's actually the superposition is going to be uh, I2 minus I1. We'll see why in a moment. Okay, now we define the mesh current. And let's uh, let's see how can we use a mesh current method to to solve circuits. <clears throat> so let's start with the with the following simple circuit. So what did we uh, what did we use to solve uh, the uh, non voltage method? What what circuit law that we heavily utilized to solve and the non to to apply the non voltage method? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, please raise your hand, uh, Hadi. Uh, by using KCL on the exactly, exactly. KCL. Really. In the uh, mesh current method, is going to we're going to use KVL, not KCL. So first, first of all, we need to identify the number of meshes here. So we have one, two. Then we need to apply KVL in this mesh and KVL in that mesh. So the mesh current here I'm called IA, the mesh current here I'm going to call it IB. So uh, let me just write it down. We need to So for mesh A, we have minus V1 plus R1 multiplied by IA plus R3 multiplied by IA minus IB equals to zero. Because here, just pay attention here. So here, uh, the current passing here, passing through R3, if you are approaching uh, from this point, it's going to be this current, which is IA, minus the current that's uh, moving upward, which is IB, by KCL. Okay, so uh, let me simplify the circuit. Okay, very good. Ahmed, question? Uh, Doctor, what if we suppose the uh, IB is moving uh, counterclockwise. Well, you, you, uh, you can add the method. Uh, okay. So you need to apply KCL here. So uh, for mesh B, so let's apply uh, KBL. It's going to be, we're going to start with RT. In this case, since we are moving here, so uh, over here, so I B 
3 is we're moving in the direction of IB, so IB will be positive. IA will be facing us, so minus IA. Uh, plus R2 IB plus V2 equals to zero. So in this case, if I simplify it, I will get R2 plus R3 IA equals to minus V2. So I have two equations to unknowns. So I can uh, solve for IA and IB. IB. What's that? IB, yes. Also, uh, OK, very good. So I, uh, so it's going to be IB. Um, this case. So I have, I have two equations to unknown, so I can solve for uh, IA and IB. So in this case, uh, I can, uh, so if I solve for IB and IB, uh, I, IA and IB, the, the question uh, most likely is asking us to find uh, I1, I2, and I3. So I1 will be exactly the same as IA. I2 will be exactly the same as IB. Now I3 will be by KCL is going to be IA minus IB. So any question, should we? Do we have to choose? Uh, yes, yeah, Shabab, Shabab, Shabab. Please raise your hand. If, if, you, if you're going to ask questions without raising your hand, it will not be counted as, as part of participation. OK, yes, go ahead. Yeah. If we're going to choose the direction for the meshes, all of them should be at one. Ah, yes, usually, yes. This will make it easy for you when you, when you invert the equation. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't matter as long as you apply KVL, but this will make it easy. So we prefer to use uh, clockwise direction. Bilal? <coughs> Uh, yes, Doctor, why is uh, I3 uh, equal to IA minus IB? Why not the other way around? OK, what is I3? If you apply KCL here. Uh, I3 plus I2 equals to I1, صح? So? Uh, yes. What is I1? Oh, OK, IA. OK. OK, thank you. So uh, this technique could be uh, illustrated more with an example, with an exercise. So let's see here. We have uh, the following circuits, and in the following circuits, we have uh, we want to use, we are asked to use the mesh current method to determine the power associated with each voltage source. So the relation between the power associated with each voltage source is I need to find the current generated or absorbed by each voltage source. So uh, Mohanad, the question or, part, uh, or uh, answer? Uh, answer. Okay, good. Bye. Uh, okay. So what will be the first step, Mohanad? Uh, we start by identifying our meshes and assuming a current direction for them. OK, good. So we have how many meshes? Uh, here we have three meshes. OK, good. So this one will be IA. This one will be IB. This one will be IC. OK, very good. Uh, Yasser, uh, what? What's next? Yes, um, after that, we need to write three equations. Uh, one for I1. We start with I1. Um, OK, yes, good. So, uh, tell me the equation of I1. Um, oh, yeah, OK. It will be minus 40. Yes. Plus 2 IA. Minus 40 yeah. plus 2 
Pi A. Plus um, 8 I A minus I B. Exactly. Equals to zero. So if I simplify it, I will get 10 I A plus, oh, sorry, minus 8 I B equals to 40. And this is the first equation. Ibrahim, the second equation. Uh, it is uh, 8 times IB minus IA. 8 times IB minus IA. Uh, okay. Plus 6 uh, IB. Exactly. Uh, plus 6 uh, times IB minus IC. Okay. Next. So if I simplify it, I will get minus 8 IA plus 20. IB minus 6 IC equals to zero, and this is the second equation. Uh, Adnan, the third equation. Uh, 6 multiplied by IC minus IB. Yes. Uh, 6 IC minus IB. Uh, plus 4 IC. Plus 4 IC. Uh, plus 20 equals to zero equals to zero. So if I simplify it, I will end up with, uh, let's move into the second page, I will end up with minus six IB plus 10 IC equals to minus 20. So now it's a piece of cake for us. We have three equations, three unknowns. Uh, so let's construct the matrix. And again, if in the exam or the quiz, uh, it's enough to write until this point, you construct the matrix, then uh, you don't need to show me how you solve it because you're going to use your calculator to give me the final answer. So you should write it like this, minus 8, 20, so. I A, I B, I C. So if I use the calculator and solve, I will get 5.6 and there's 2.0 and there. And I C is 0.8 and there. Okay, now I found the values of the currents. Uh, remember, I wasn't asked to find the values of the current, I was asked to find the power associated with the voltage sources. Uh, so, uh, Ila, uh, what would be the power associated with the 40 volt source? Yes, uh, it is good to be IA multiplied by 40. Okay, what would be the sign? The sum of 40. The sign. Ah, the sign. Right. Uh, uh, it's the passive sign conversion. Uh, negative. Exactly. Uh, with the voltage drop, can you go to the diagram? Yes, going to be negative. Exactly. So 40 multiplied by IA, which is 5.6, and this is going to give me minus 2 to 4 watts. Now for the 20 volt source, uh, slack more. Can you please go to the diagram? Just to make sure. Uh, yes. So it's going to be a positive uh, 20 times IC. Okay, positive 20 times IC. IC is negative, which means actually IC is, if we get a negative current, it means that we are assuming the direction of the current this way, but the actual direction is the opposite. So it's going to be negative 0.8. And this will give me 16, negative 16. Okay. So this answers the uh, first part.
The second part is asking us to calculate V naught and to calculate V naught, uh, Mehsin, how to calculate V naught? Uh, v equal I R. Okay, what is I here? Uh, I've considered uh, the current to be from uh, from the positive uh, sign. Okay, so what from, is I? Uh, will be I A minus I B. Exactly. So in this case, V naught will be eight I A minus I B, which is in this case twenty eight. Point eight volt. Okay. Any question about this exercise? Uh, yes, the top. The Gigas Ahmed Al Hamidani. Abd Aziz Hamidani. Yes, doctor. Question. So, when do we need to use the mesh method? Uh, we'll talk about uh, in this in all of these exercises. We, you're asked to explicitly to to use the mesh graph method. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll explain uh, which technique to use in which circuit. Okay, thank you. But simply the the simple answer is the one that's going to give you the uh, the fewer number of equations. Okay, nice. Thank you, Ahmed. Okay. Uh, Doctor, why why do you multiply eight uh, by uh, I I A minus I B? Why not I B minus I A? So what's the current person here? Uh, I A. I X is equal to I A. Again. I X is equal to I A. Yes, I no I A minus I B. Okay. So what uh, uh, doing? So so we uh, we should get the the positive one. Okay. Yes. Uh, Omar, you had a question. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, take another exercise, and this exercise is kind of like. Tricky in a way that it's been drawn, but don't get uh, don't get uh, frustrated about it. So the first step is you need to do is what? What do you think, Sugar? Little cream. Uh, probably uh, redraw it, then I define the wishes. Yeah. So this is kind of frustrating here. So you probably need to start by redrawing the circuit. So if you redraw the circuit, you will get something like this. So we have five kilo ohm. And then you will have one kilo ohm and thirty kilo ohm. And in this case, this is I naught. So this is exactly the same uh, circuit. It's, now it's easier to see uh, how to apply uh, mesh current method. Uh, so, Hassan al uh, what do you think the best way to start? Okay, yes. How many meshes do I have? Uh, three. Okay. So, I have this order. I'm going to call it <coughs> sorry. mesh A. Mesh B and Mesh C. Okay. Good. Hi. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, what should I do? I'm looking for new names. 
محمد عبد العزيز سويلف يس فيرست وي رايت ذا ايكويشنز اوف مش اي اوكي وات از ات؟ ماينس 20 بلس 2 كي اي 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 ماينس اي بي بلس 30 كي اي اي ماينس اي سي اكزاكتلي Exactly. That's that's what we mean. So it's going to be minus twenty plus two k i a minus i b plus thirty k i a minus i c equals to zero. So let me bring the circuit here. This way. Okay, very good. Uh, so if I simplify it, I would end up with thirty two. 32k IA minus 2k IB. When I say 2k, 32k, it means uh, 2,000, uh, 32,000, etc. But I'm not going to write zeros. Okay. The second equation, let me look for a new name here. Abdullah Nas. Uh, 5K IB. Uh, okay, uh, five, okay, you want to start from this point. Okay, 5K IB. Okay, go ahead. Uh, plus uh, 5K. I B minus I C. Mm -hmm. Plus two K I B minus I A. Okay, good. So if I simplify it, I will get minus two K. If you have those who did not participate, uh, please note that the the participation score depends on your engagement in the class. And uh, this will be actually useful in, in understanding the material as well. So uh, you get points, you get more scores, and you get uh, better understanding of the material. Okay, let me see. One. One K I C. Okay. Uh, and the three thirty K I C minus uh, I A. Okay. Uh, no, we're missing something. Uh, and five uh, K uh, C minus B I B.
IK K I C minus I B equals to zero. So if I simplify it, I will get minus 30 K I A. Minus 5 K I B. Plus 36 K. I C equals to zero. So I have three equations, three and four. So have you checked uh, the way of solving this problem using your calculator? <clears throat> hmm? Yes. Oh, yes. So the maximum you can get is three by three, right? Yes. Yeah. So what happens if you have four by four? Hmm? I think I need to find the determinant. Uh, sorry, the so you can eliminate one equation. And if you eliminate one, you will get a three by three uh, system and you can solve it. Okay. Okay, we found I B I A I B I I C, but remember here, I'm not asked to find I B I I A I B I C. I'm asked to find I not. So what is I not in terms of uh, in terms of uh, I A I B I C? Ahmed Al Hamad. Ahmed. I not is equal to uh, I B. And minus I mm, not really. Back to the equations. No, try here to apply KCL. So this current is IC, this current is IB, and this current is I not. Minus uh minus A B I B mm -hmm. plus I C. Yes, exactly. I naught will be IC minus IB, which is in this case two the amperes. Okay, uh, is it clear, Shabab? Clear. Okay, good. Any question? Omar? Question? Leila? The uh, Kirib? Yes, Doctor. Doctor, what if I have a complicated, uh, like, circuit? Can I mesh, can I, like, match, like, use both mesh and not voltage mesh? Not really. We have to stick to one one approach. Thank you, thank you. We cannot have a complicated circuit in, in the exam. If you have actually, in reality, if you have a complicated circuit, then the best way to do that is you go to uh, multism and simulate it, or piece by and simulate it. So why do you waste your time trying to analyze it by hand? Okay, very good. So now let's consider the case when we have a dependent uh, faulted source. Uh, let's see what happens if we have a dependent faulted source. Uh, we saw previously when we talked about the mesh car, when we talked about uh, the node voltage uh, method, having a, 
a dependent source did not change much of our calculation. It's only added the fact that we need to impose the constraints equation. We're going to see exactly the same uh, behavior here. So let's start, let's, let's attempt to solve this problem. So you can see here we have uh, how many meshes? Uh, Abdullah al -Jiriri. We have three meshes. Three meshes, exactly. So this one is IA. This one, if I call it IB. This one is IC. Okay, uh, very good. So let's start uh, with IA. I need to find a new one in here. So, uh, okay, let's see. Mahsen, Mahsen, I think you participated first. Okay, Mahmoud, Yasser, Rahim, Jazeez, Dana, all of them. Okay, Ali Tali. Okay, uh, 50 equal. Uh, five uh, bracket uh, and uh, I one minus I two. Okay, so let's let's apply it like this: minus fifty plus mm -hmm. pi. Five, yes. I a minus I phi. I c uh, plus uh, twenty. Mm -hmm. I a Mm-hmm. Then I B. Minus I B. Yes. Equal zero. Okay. So if I simplify it, I will get twenty-five I A minus twenty I B minus five I C equals to fifty. This is one. Okay. The uh, second equation, so let me look for a new name as well. Okay. I have, uh, okay. Walid, Walid Baqid. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, IV. 20. Uh, multiplied by IB minus IA. Exactly. Plus 4 multiplied by mm -hmm. IB minus IC. Mm -hmm. Plus 15 I uh, 5. Plus 15 IB equals to 0. So if I simplify it, I will end up with minus 20 IA plus 24 IB minus 4 IC plus 15 IV equals to zero, and this is the second equation. Type the third equation, uh, ahead. Uh, yes, uh, five by IC minus IA. Five IC minus IA, exactly. Uh, one uh, by I C. Yes. And for I C minus I B. Exactly. So let me just write now what you what you what you see. So it's going to be I C, which is one multiplied by I C, for I C minus I B plus five I C minus I A equals to zero. So minus five I A minus four I B plus ten I C equals to zero and this is the second one. Now this is the third equation. 
So since I have uh, four unknowns, so I need to add uh, one more equation, and this is actually the equation of the uh, of the uh, of the dependent source here. So the dependent source I phi, I phi is what? Uh, so let me look for a new one. Okay, since all of people who raised their hands, they, they have participated. Actually, um, Mohammed Fadl gives. Mohammed Al Mashtali. Yes, doctor. Okay, so what is what is the uh, how to relate IP to IA, IB, and IC? Uh, I uh, I will equal uh, I A minus I B. Uh, exactly. I B equals to I A minus I B. So in this case, and they have four equations, four unknowns. So I can construct the matrix 50, 0, 0, 0 here. So if, if you have, uh, if you want to do it in your calculator, because here I use the MATLAB to, to, to find the, uh, the roots or to find the, uh, the values, but if you want to use it in your calculator, then you may need to take this one and only substitute it into this equation. And this is going to change the values of uh, the coefficients of IA, IB, and IC. IA and IB as well. IC is not, it will be to stay as it is. Okay, so if you solve for it, you will get IA equals to 29.6, IB equals to 28, IC equals to 26 and there, and IP equals to 1.6 and there. Okay, we're done here, but uh, remember, we're not asked to find IB, IC, and IA. We're asked to find the power dissipated in the 4 ohm resistor. So what will be the power dissipated in the 4 ohm resistor? And this is a question that... Um, okay, let me look for... Okay, let me see someone who has not participated. So, I'm that table. I'm that table. That is. Okay. Uh, sorry. Ahmed Maes. Yes, Dr. Ahmed. Right. Ahmed, what is the power dissipated and the uh, dissipated by in the four arm resistor? How to calculate? Equal the I. Hmm? You don't know the voltage. Okay. 
だいぶ楽しいニュースもいいかなとは知りつつ。マウヤマウヤ。Yes, doctor. What do you think? What's the bar、uh, participated in the bar on the system? Or how to calculate it? Based on the values and based on the variables that we found. Um, I think、uh, the resistors. The distance、um, divided by the current squared. What is the current? 15. What's that? 15. Uh, no. No, sir. No, sir. Great. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's、uh, Maui said? It's、uh, the it's the it's it's the current multiplied by the resistance. The current should be squared multiplied by the resistance. So what's the current passing through the power on the system? Based on the value, based on the variables that we have. For、uh, loop IC. Huh? IC. For、uh, for I loop. Which loop? The current. We're interested in finding the current circulating, the current passing for the four ohm resistor. It's、uh, four. Thank you, Marwandi. Usama Gandhi. Sada Boyan. Yes, Doctor. Minant. Kev. Minant. Sad Boyan. Sad Boyan. Okay. So, what is the、uh, what's the power dissipated in the power on the resistor? So, we said it's the current squared multiplied by the resistance. What is the current passing for the four ohm resistor? Which one?、Uh, for for、uh, which one, doctor? The current passing for the four ohm resistor. So this is the four ohm resistor. So what's the current passing for? In order to find the power.、Oh. <coughs> Can play me? Turkey. Play Wael.、Uh, yes, Doctor. Wael? Yes. Okay. okay, what's the current passing through the 50, the 4 ohm resistor? It would be the difference between、uh, IP and IC. Okay. Exactly. So it will be the difference between IB and IC. So it doesn't matter which which side you take.、Uh, the thing is, like, because eventually you're going to square it. So the result is IB minus IC squared, or IC minus IB squared. So the the result will be exactly the same. And、uh, the value will be sixteen, sixteen、uh, watts. Okay, this is the power dissipated in the power of the system. Okay,、uh, okay. The last question that we need to solve, and、uh, this question we need to、uh, apply the Mishkaroff method to find、uh, V naught here. Uh, in the following circuit. So let's see,、uh, Mehsen. So what what will be the first step? 
Yes, uh, identify the mission. Okay, how many missions do I have? Uh, three. Okay, three. So this one I A, I B, and I C. Excellent. Yes, sir. So, uh, yes, I will start by I A. Okay, before before we start, yes, sir. So what yeah. is I delta and uh, relation to uh, the I delta is, is I B. Okay, good. So this actually you can see here by inspection, we eliminate we eliminate the need for having four equations because here we have three equations, three and bonds, because we have three meshes. The fact that we have uh, a dependent uh, voltage source will add an extra equation, but just noticing here that we have I delta. Just noticing here that I delta equals to IB. So we can easily substitute and eliminate the necessity for having a third equation. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. And um, minus 40. Mm -hmm. Plus 125 IA. OK. Plus 300 IA minus IB. Equals zero. Exactly. Okay. So if I simplify it, it's going to be IA minus 300 IB equal to 40, and this is one. Brahim. Okay. Uh, Brahim. The second equation? Uh, 300 times IB minus IA. Mm -hmm. uh, 75 uh, IB. Okay. Plus 25 IB. Equals so, zero. So if I simplify it, I will end up with minus 300 IA plus 400. IB equals to zero. Okay, uh, third question is yet. Um, minus 500 IB. Okay. And uh, 200 I, 200, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, I see. So I, I just added uh, those 50 plus uh, 200, so this is going to give me uh, 250, I see. So now I have three equations, the unknowns. I can construct the matrix. So 40, 0, 0. 425. Minus 300, uh, 0, 0. IA, IV, and I see. So if I solve for it, I will get IA equals 2.2 and this. IB equals 2.15 and this. IC equals 2.3 and this. So now I found uh, the values IA, IB, and IC. Uh, Ahmed and Nafa, uh, what's the, uh, I'm asked to find V naught. So what is V naught? Uh, v naught is uh, 200 uh, ampere uh, ohm. Yes. Uh, yes. Over the IC. Over? Uh, no, no, times, times, because you want uh, the voltage. Okay. So V naught will be 200 multiplied by IC, which is uh, 200 multiplied by 0.3 equals to 60. Okay, 
so uh, we saw that the fact that we have a dominion source does not change uh, much. The uh, only difference here is that uh, we need to add an extra equation. It happens here that there is a straightforward relation between the mesh current and that extra equation. Uh, any question? Uh, okay, uh, Ziad, question? Is there a, such a thing where we uh, fuse two meshes? Is there such thing where what? We, I mean, need measure and then mesh two. Yes, 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 we'll explain it in a moment. Uh, we'll come to it, okay. Amar? Uh, doctor, is in the exam we will be asked to use the mesh count method or uh, we are supposed mm -hmm. to figure it out? No, the, in the exam, you will be asked specifically to uh, find, uh, to use a specific method. If you use the other method, you'll get zero. Oh, because it's written? Okay, thank you. Yes, the, the exam is going to be physical. It's going to be written. Uh, okay. Uh, good. Um, Hannah? Uh, yes, sir, doctor. In the previous question, if he asked me to find the current on the 4 ohm resistor, how can I determine B minus A or uh, C minus B or B minus C? Well, it didn't ask you to find the current for the 4 ohm resistor. It asked you to find the power dissipated in the 4 ohm resistor, huh? Yes. Okay. So what's the uh, what's the uh, expression for the power? I know that the power is I square R, so uh, there will okay. be no different. It's negative or positive. Yes. But I mean, if if you ask about the current in the four ohm resistor, he must give me an extra current to find the direction or give me the direction. Of, right? No, no. Oh. So if I ask you to find the, the current passing through the four ohm resistor, then choose any one of them. Uh, oh, okay. Would you assume that IB minus IC? If you choose IB minus IC, let's see the values here. Uh, you will see that the difference is two. So, which means that if you choose IB minus IC, you're assuming that the current is actually flowing this way. So? Ah, yes. And if you do your calculation, you will get positive, which means your assumption yeah. and the current flow, they agree with one another. So, your assumption is correct. Oh, okay. If you choose IC minus IB, you will get a current that, that's flowing this way but the value is negative. The negative value of the current, it means that the current is opposing the direction you assume. Okay? Okay. Abdullah, Abdullah, Abdullah. What's your name? It's Dr. What will be the material of the material? Uh, we will we'll, uh, announce it, uh, but most likely it will be chapter up to chapter four. So, so far we have chapter uh, four point until I think four point six now. Uh, mm -hmm. Four point seven and eight, and the remaining week will cover, inshallah, the majority of chapter four. The, our, our exam is in week five, the end of week five, so we have enough time to cover it. Uh, uh, yes, doctor. Uh, can't we solve the power dissipated through the four ohm resistor uh, with voltage? Yes, but why? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe at the exam, the first thing comes to my mind to use it with voltage. So it's uh, is it all correct or? Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's going to be correct, but here, you need to use the current to find the voltage, right? Huh? Yes. Okay. Then you need to use the voltage multiplied by the current to get the power, right? Huh? Yes. Okay. Here in the question, the, the way you solve for the question, it gives you directly the current. Yes. 
Okay, so why do you need an extra step? Yes, but, but, it's, uh, but it's the up. voltage here is uh, 15 um, uh, multiplied by I, I phi, right? No. Then what is the voltage here? The voltage will be 2 multiplied by 4, which will be 8 volts. 2 multiplied by 4? Yes, the current, which is 2, multiplied by the resistance, which is 4. So this can give you 8. And then you're going to use 8 multiplied by the current, again, which is 2. And you'll get the bar. Uh, OK, I understand now. OK, so the, the way we use this is uh, easier. Uh, faster. Yes, shorter. OK, thank you. Uh, Doctor, chapter one is uh, excluded from the midterm. No, no, it's it's part of the midterm. Things that we cover in the midterm when they cover the class. So from chapter one, chapter four, most likely, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, so uh, I wasn't supposed to cover this, but uh, I don't know why. What, what happens today? We I cover all of what I supposed to cover, and and they still have uh, nine minutes, so I'm not gonna waste those nine minutes. Uh, let me just uh, take, for example, this circuit, something like this, and just think about special cases. So if you remember uh, when we talked about node voltage method, we consider the case where we have a uh, voltage source connected between two nodes, so. so if I take, for example, if I'm applying the node voltage method, okay, this is one ohm, this is five ohm, this is 20 ohm, this is four ohm, and I have this one, say like 15 R V. So I'm just redrawing the circuit that, that we had before. So if I'm asking you to uh, use node voltage method, the first thing that, you, uh, that comes in your mind is that you identify the number of nodes. So you have essential nodes, you have this one. So you have four essential nodes. You set one of them as a reference node. And uh, from that, uh, you will find the higher, you need to apply three voltage equations. But you notice here, uh, you have two things, uh, two simplifications. So the first one is, if this one is node A or node 1, this one is node 2, node 3. So clearly, you know the voltage, uh, the node voltage one and node voltage three. Why? Because you have a voltage source here. So the voltage source value here was what? 40, 54. So you know the node voltage value here. So this reduce, this reduces the number of equations from three equations. Um, Originally, it was three equations plus dependent equation, which is four. Now it's been reduced to what? To one equation plus dependent equation, which is equal to two. So you see here, because of the uh, voltage source between a reference node and another another essential node, I have uh, reduced the number of needed equations. So the question is, uh, how much I think Palal or Ziad, one of you, one of you has mentioned something. Else. Okay. So what happens if I have a? Uh, is there a simplification if we have uh, mesh for our time to apply the mesh current method? The answer is yes, but we need to modify the circuit. Here. So if instead of the voltage source, I'm giving a current source here. Okay, let me 
So if I'm instead of the faulted source, I'm giving here a current source. So let me copy. And here I have a different circuit, but this one has a current source. And I'm asking you to find the mesh currency. So you would say that, uh, apply the mesh current method. You see that, well, I have, okay, let me use different currency. I have IA, IB, and IC. So how many equations do I have? Let me make this one two numbers. So originally, if, uh, since I have three meshes, I have three equations plus the dependent equation, which is four. Now, remember, what's the mesh current IA? Yes, uh, go ahead and answer. Ibrahim. Uh, it is the two number. Yes. Okay. Because I have here, I have a debit, I have a, a, a current source here. The mesh current is given to me. So the mesh current is two number. So this reduces the number of equations to two equations plus the dependent equation which makes it three. Any question here? Is it clear? So the first special case, uh, well the special case is when we have a current source and the first special case here we have a current source that's equal a mesh that's that in the perimeter of the circuit. So the mesh current is equal to the, uh, the mesh current is equal to the current source. We'll see, inshallah, in the next lecture that uh, what happens if we have a mesh, if we have a current source, instead of being in the, in the border, it's here. So what can we do? And this is uh, the case for silver mesh. We'll, uh, we'll explain, inshallah, next lecture. Okay, uh, Ahmed, Ahmed al uh, Doctor, I have a, a simple question about the last exercise. Yes, okay. Uh, any question about this one so before going back to the last? Okay, you may leave down here. Yeah. Uh, Ahmed, yes, go ahead. Ahmed, yes. Go ahead. Yes, could, could you please? Uh, uh, yeah, here. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, I Delta on the left side. Yes. Uh, will it be uh, separated or it's, uh, all, all of it will uh, go, go to the left? No, uh, here there is no. Uh... Here, current will not flow here. So because no there is no, uh, because the, there is there, no element in the, in the line. And so, there's no potential difference between uh, this point and that point. Again? There is no potential difference between this point and that uh, point. Thanks. Okay, any other questions, Shabab? Ziad, yes. Uh, can you go to the first exercise? Well, this is an unofficial office hour, so you may use it. Okay. This one? 
Uh, yes. For determining the power for the voltage source. Mm -hmm. When the current is going out of the positive. Yes. That means that the current, uh, the source is uh, delivering power. Uh, yes. Yes. And if it enters it from the positive, that means the opposite? Yes. But the thing here that we need to keep in mind that if IA is positive, which is in this case, IA, IA here is positive, right? Uh, if we did, when we did our calculation, IA was positive, which means that we assume that the current is leaving the source from the positive side. Yes. Uh, in this and case, uh, it means that the direction of the current flow and uh, agrees with our assumption. So by passive sign convention here, uh, the current is 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 uh, is flowing against the uh, against the voltage uh, against the voltage drop. So from the negative to the positive. So I should have a negative sign. So for well, the positive sign, we look at the inside of the voltage source. Yes. Uh, for here, for example, in the 20 volts, we see that IC is entering from the positive side. Right? Yes. So according to the passive sign convention, IC, I should have plus IC multiplied by a plus 20. But IC here, is, the value is negative. So that's why I'm getting negative. Okay. Can you see here that I did not, I put this one outside. But here, this one belongs to the current. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions about? Okay, very good. Bye. Uh, okay, we'll see you, inshallah, uh, next class.